Good um, afternoon, everyone. Um, I know this has been a long time in coming. I promised everyone I would do a, uh, a review on the My Little Pony series. Um, and in the background, there's Shadow. Um, but, uh, yeah, I promised I would do this. Um, but before I... I get into uh, the review and stuff. There's some things that I bought that I kind of want to show you guys. So I may show that stuff in a later video. And for right now, I will do the My Little Pony review. Um, we'll start off this series. We'll start off the series with the original um, that started the whole thing. Um, hello, kitty. Um, but uh, other than that, um, Shadow, look at the camera. Look at the camera. See the camera? There's a good girl. She's really camera shy. She don't want to really get into the picture, but she likes to be around me for some reason. Um, we'll start off with the original series that started the whole thing and uh, work our way from there to the uh, to the new series that Lauren Flo uh, Lauren Fosted. Um, the classic TV collection which has all the episodes I recommend you know honestly for me being an 80s kid I uh, this is what got me into the My Little Pony stuff I had a few of the old My Little Pony figurines I wish I still had them I don't anymore uh, the closest one I got actually is is the Rainbow Dash Generation 3 figure. Um, <sighs> Generation 1 um, brings back so many memories. Uh, the flight to, uh, you know, Midnight Castle. Um, so many uh, 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 things that were, uh, you know... Um, included, um, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, um, or, I mean, not to play to Midnight Castle, but the rescue to Midnight Castle with, um, Firefly, um, I'm sorry, I had to look up the, uh, episode names, because I kind of forgot, um, but those are some of the classics, you know, the introduction of, of uh, the introduction of Megan, um, you know, and the ponies needing her help. Um, yeah, it was for little kids. They, they did have some brawnies, um, you know, and uh, for me, I, I enjoyed the show. It was one of the major highlights besides, you know, the, the, Care, the Care Bear show um, or the gummies, you know, the gummy bears. Um, those were things I watched when I was little. I mean, I didn't get into, like, the Transformer cartoons or anything like that till I was probably in high school, you know. And uh, there were a couple of times I would get up early and, and during grade school and watch some of that stuff. But I, when I remember watching My Little Pony, it was mostly the movies. And I didn't realize at the time that there was a series, but... Now that I'm older and I was able to finally collect the full seasonal, you know, series, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, you really get to know the characters. Yeah, some characters don't, you know, appear um, in the series like you would have thought, you know, that they, they appeared in the movies. Like, Twilight, for example, only briefly appears in Rescue you know, at Midnight Castle, um, and, uh, <clears throat> there are some things that, you know, Hasbro originally lost the copyrights to all these characters. That's why when they came up with the new series, they could not reuse the names of some of these characters. Um, they had to come up with a whole new, uh, origin, uh, for them, which is kind of sad, but they had to. Um, the other thing, too, is that um, in order to fully appreciate the new series, 
I recommend you watch it, this one because this has the older characters. Um, this is really the beginning of what you know friendship really was to the ponies and, and the humans. Um, you know, the other thing too is that um, there's maybe not as as much friendliness in the original series because a lot of times the ponies the mares especially bicker back and forth you know they make fun of each other um they are rude to a certain extent but on the other hand what i really liked about the original series was that these guys actually looked like ponies um they didn't they weren't all squished you know um that's my biggest gripe for the new stuff. They're, they look completely squished. They don't look like actual horses or ponies. Uh, the closest that come to that maybe are the alicorns. You know, Celestia and Luna. They're, they're the closest that look like actual horses and ponies. Um, but you go to Twilight, Sparkle, and the rest of her friends. They look entirely squished. Uh, Spike is about the only normal thing in the whole show. Because he actually looks like a dragon. You know, he's not squished up. Um, but, I mean, to be honest, a lot of people are going to gripe and say, well, we hate, you know, the original series because Spike's voice in that series was so bad, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? It's vintage. It's the 80s. It's not going to be good stuff. You know, they had to work with what they had. Especially voice actors. Some voice actors had to play more than one role. You know? It's give or take situation. You know? Um, the point of fact is that, uh, that this series would not have taken off if it had not have been, uh, for the original. If it had not have been for the original, the other series that came afterwards, like, uh, for example, um, Ponytails, My Little Ponytails, are, yeah, for example, it never would have taken off and been for the original series. These came afterwards. And this is considered by most the anti uh, Friendship is Magic series. Um, mainly because of how rude and awful these guys are, you know, <laughs> to each other. Um, but, again, um, they are. Uh, you know they're they're worth owning um to to be honest with you and then you know just for the record i have this the movie this moves because um this really tells a story of how the ponies met flutter valley the ponies in flutter valley now the ponies in flutter valley um are called flutter ponies and the breezies in the uh, Friendship is Magic series are basically a rip off of the Flutter Ponies. Uh, I recommend you watch this movie and you will see what I'm talking about because the Flutter Ponies, including in with the original TV series, look nothing like the Breezies. Nothing like the Breezies. Um, the Flutter Ponies, they don't have antennas, they don't look bug like. I mean, come on. Lauren Frost could have, you know, to me, she could have done better. <laughs> to me, the, the, the Breezy's just, they're ridiculous. Uh, Flutter Ponies, to me, are much more, they look more fairy-like. You know, they don't look bug-like. So, uh, that, that, that is what I'm just trying to tell you guys, is watch the original first, before you judge... You know, um, friendship is magic because the original, to me, will always outshine uh, the uh, friendship is magic series. And don't get me wrong, it took me a while to like friendship is magic, but the only reason it took me so long to like them is because. Of the art style. The art style, I, I thought, you know, just wasn't, it didn't me. Um, I grew up with actual 
drawings that look more like ponies, uh, you know, than, um, yeah, than, than what they show in, in Friendship is Magic. So, um, that there is the entire collection of this series. Um, we could go on for hours. I could actually do the whole series, and I think I will. I'll let this video be a long one because of the fact that, um, you guys will get a kick out of knowing e why I like each and every season. Um, and, and like I said, I don't have season five yet, but I'll be getting that eventually. Um, season one, um, is all six, 36 episodes, um, or I'm not all 36, but all 26. Excuse the slip up. I'm not quite awake, you know. I had a late night last night, and storms came in last night, so yeah. Um, all 26 episodes, I highly recommend if, if you don't have satellite, or Netflix, or any of the above, or the internet, um, and you only have internet on your phone, and you're not capable of getting, you know, YouTube, or, uh, or I mean, not YouTube, but our Netflix or something like that, you know, because data costs. Um, highly recommend you go out and you search for, you know, or order this if you can, you know, or have, go to a store that can order this for you and tell them you want season one of My Little Fren Friendship, you know, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And I'm sure Walmart or Best Buy or someplace like that, they'll order it for you. Um... I highly recommend that you do watch this series. You know, you watch it with an open mind. Don't go based off of what I said earlier because, like I said, I had to go into this with kind of an open mind. There are things I don't like about it, and namely, it's the artwork that was put into this. I don't like it because the ponies are squished up in the face. They don't look like ponies to me. Um... I love the storytelling. The storytelling is great. I love the fact they added in a Draconicus. So, um, you know, the fact Discord is in there is, is, is an awesome episode. Um, he's actually one of my favorite semi-villains, you know, after they reform him. But, on the other hand, I love it because he's, you know, he's the Lord of Chaos. Um, so, he's... You know, a guy that can be swayed to be doing, you know, evil, you know, and then, you know, they have to work on him g getting good again. Um, but then I love things, you know, dragon things in general, and their rendition of Spike is pretty good. Now, I like Spike. Spike's pretty cool. Um, Rainbow Dash is a pretty cool character. Um, she reminds me a lot of Firefly, you know, and, um... And some other characters that briefly appeared in the classic TV show. Um, and, and there are some other things too, like, you know, they, they, Pinkie Pie and, and, you know, um, there's a bunch of different ones that have made a comeback from the original, like, um, oh heck. If I can think of one of the names from the originals, um, It'll come to me, I'll, I'll think of it at some point, when I'm no longer doing this video. Um, but this is the first season, and like I said, you get into it, um, you might start liking it. The younger kids, I'm not for sure will. Um, yes, there's magic involved, so there's a lot of Christians who probably aren't going to watch the show. You know, that's fine and dandy, but kids, if you know somebody who has the videos and is willing to share... Go over to the house and watch it, because your parents can't stop you from watching it over at somebody else's house. Okay? That's a known fact. So, you know, think about that. Um, in light of this, I grew up watching it. My mom didn't have a problem with it, but some parents will have a problem with it because of how they were raised. Um... Uh, to me, I really don't see anything wrong with it. It teaches good values, so, um, you know, I mean, there's there's a catch-22, you know? You're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. Um, I liked it for the storytelling. I love the songs that are included in here. Um, 
you know, each friend town has a problem that they have to work through, and, you know, it just, it, it incorporates so much into the story. Um, then there's some episodes where they go into a little bit of history of how Ponyland was uh, created, um, and, and things, or equest how Equestria was created, and things of that nature, but, um, it's pretty awesome, and then they go into the story of how Luna and Celestia defeated, you know, Discord originally, um, and how what happened with, you know, Luna, you know, being uh, sentenced to the moon, you know, in the very first episode, and it isn't until later that you know they, res you know, they restore her harmony back, and then she's no longer Nightmare Moon, you know. Um, in fact, Nightmare Moon, you know, as a evil figure, um, in the equine sense of her design, when they showed her, I really liked that, because that, to me, said, okay, that looks more like a pony or an equine figure than Twilight Sparkle or Applejack or Rarity or any of the others in Ponyville, okay? So... Celestia and the Arabian, uh, the Arabian uh, horses that come into play, the Royal Arabian horses that show up, they are more horse-like, okay? Now that was awesome, okay? That was good drawing. The ponies, on the other hand, suck. They squished up their faces, they don't look like actual ponies. There, there are some things wrong with that. Um, if you were like me and you were you know, into the 80s stuff, this stuff would be a big disappointment to you because of the way that it is drawn. It was to me. I don't know about anybody else. But, um, I mean, there are good points and, and, and bad points. And like I said, the storytelling is great. The musicals that they do are awesome. Um, the drawings, you know, like I said, you know, it took me a while to like, but now that I have watched this and watched this over and over again, I have enjoyed the storytelling, I have enjoyed the characters' struggle, um, as their journeys progress, um, and from season one, after they have basically, after you know, uh, she has learned everything that she needs to learn. Then I believe... <sighs> goes into where her brother... Shining Armor gets married, and I do believe that it's in this one that they meet, uh, Discord, I believe, it was either in season one or season two, but I know in one of these, Discord is, is appeared, you know, and, um, you know, they have to send him back. Then you also get introduced to the Kitty Mark Crusaders, which I love. They were cute. They had me laughing so hard sometimes. But it also struck a chord with me because of the fact that a lot of us who are born with a disability, you know, we go to school. A lot of times we're made fun of, you know, um, and we're bullied or whatnot. And a lot of times, we don't have anybody in our corner to fight back, you know? I know for a fact that I myself was made fun of in grade school. I was made fun of because of my weight. I just laughed it off because there was nothing really I could do, you know? They had their opinion. The guy was a skinny dude, and, you know, I mean, people do. They, they make fun of those who are different. And they don't realize that at the end of the day... That can hurt somebody who's sensitive. Um, I'm sorry, but when you're dealing with somebody 
who may have a logic center that was damaged at birth, um, who wasn't born perfectly normal, um, then yeah, that can hurt their feelings, and they can get kind of upset. I know a lot of times I dealt with that in our complex area, where one time I rode my bike, and this little kid, who I was bigger than him, uh, decided he was going to threaten and beat me up. And so I got my dad on to him, and he told him, are you, uh, you know, making fun of my daughter? And my dad, of course, he's six foot tall, and he's very gruff. And this little kid looked at him, and I think he got scared, and it's like telling my dad, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean it, you know. But my dad's like, well, if you ever do, then your parents will be sued, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so, yeah, there's... Uh, it really struck a chord with me that bullying and being made fun of in school are all things that happen on a normal daily basis. They incorporated it in a couple of episodes, and some of that dealt with the Kitty Mark Crusaders. Now, I enjoy it now as an adult, and it made me think back on um, on things like that. And, and, and like I said, if you watch it in the context of a little kid, you're not going to pick up the deep stuff. But you watch it as an adult, and you're going to pick up on what they're not saying. And you're going to pick up on the hidden psychological aspects of the show. Um, the adult, some of the adult humor, some of the uh, adult behaviors, uh, things of that nature. Um, for example, you know, Zakora, when she was introduced, nobody liked her because she was different. They had never seen anything like her before. You know, and so they were all scared of her. So, I mean, that right there is, is another thing. There are some people who are terrified of somebody who's disabled. And unless they have a child or someone within that area that... Um, has a disability, they will always be afraid of those who have those problems. Uh, my mom, for example, told me one day that, you know, if it hadn't been for me, she still would have been afraid of people with disabilities. Um, and this is despite the fact that she had her own disability because she had one eye that was closed like this and she couldn't hardly see out of. So her ability to see in depth was, um, you know, off all the time. Um, so she only had one good eye that she could see out of. And um, that that there, you know, that proves, you know, that these shows are good to watch because they have um, hidden meanings to them within the, sh within the cartoon itself. Um, and you need to, as an adult, you need to look and watch at that because a lot of that will strike a card within your own heart. And you need to be aware of that. Um, and then we'll go on to um, season three, which by this time she has become an alicorn and she's had to deal with a bunch of things that have happened. Um, uh, you know, she's had to do a magic duel, she's had to do, uh, you know, deal with the Crystal Empire, um, so many things that you wouldn't, you know, know, and a lot of this was great fun, um, I think, one of these, anyways, I think in this one is when they befriend Discord, um, because uh, they they realize that Discord has never had a friend before, and it makes Discord think, you know, that um, maybe having a friend is better than not having anybody, you know. And being that he is lonely, you know, um, and never really ever connecting to anybody, he manages <coughs> to connect to Fluttershy. Um, but at the same time, he also enjoys irritating the heck out of Twilight. Um, and that's, that's included in season four. Um, like, he pretends to be sick when he's not. 
And um, then, of course, he gets talked into doing something really bad in Season 4. Um, by, um, oh heck. Um, by that centaur guy. Uh, I used to know their names, but anyway, um, that storyline is different because in that end, um, which is the same two characters that were in Rescue at Midnight Castle, um, the origin stories there are different because in Flight to Midnight Castle, um, the gargoyle, um, um, oh heck, I forgot his name now, but anyway, the gargoyle was originally cursed, um, by the centaur guy, and he was originally a human prince in the original series. Well, they changed that in Friendship as Magic and made it towards saying that these guys were brothers and that they hailed from a different magical realm. Um, that makes it interesting, but on the other hand, it kind of throws out the original story that they did a movie on with these guys. Um, so, I'm going to have to say um, that throws some disconsistency in with their series because of the fact that these guys weren't never from an alternate timeline. They were from the original series. Um, and they were not brothers. Um, it, it's kind of funny that they kind of did that, but, I mean, it, it made for a good story because in the end it allowed Twilight to get her castle, um, which technically she is the daughter of the original Twilight, but the color scheme that they used for the original Twilight, which they only ever showed her on occasion, um, was very different than her original appearance in the show, which was very brief, because it was only ever shown in the intros of the original TV series. Um, but other than that, um, they did a break, they did an awesome job, don't get me wrong. Um, but I would go so far to say that some of the storyline, like, I would have loved to have had more dealings with, um, you know, not, not the centaur guy, but, um, but the fact that, um, um, of the fact that they could have done more with the guy's brother, I mean, they could have, you know, had him come back to help Twilight, you know, or something, um, but, you know, like I said, uh, and in fact, there's another character that they, they've completely missed, uh, Tamberloin. Uh, Tamberloin, or Tamberloin was uh, a goat character that was from the Nightmare Realm, um, you know, or the Night Realm, or whatever they called it, but he was another character that they could have developed a storyline for, and they didn't, they haven't yet. Um, now, in the last season, which I think is season five, they brought in the Smooth character, Smooth character, um, and that kind of had me laughing because it was totally different than <laughs> the smooths in the original movie, which was created by the two witches, or the three witches, um, you know, in, in a lot of laughs in, in the old classics. And they were quite cheesy. Um, this takes, I guess, more on a serious note, but there are still some funny moments. Um, but on the other hand, like I said, I would have loved to have seen them incorporate more of the brother scenario thing um, in with My Little Pony. So maybe there's still a chance that they will, you know, bring those guys back again, um, you know, at a later time or, you know, another thing. Um, because we really haven't seen any uh, interaction with the guy's brother. Uh, they briefly mentioned him, but other than that, they, um, you know, they, they didn't, uh, they did not really, um, 
you know, they really didn't uh, incorporate much into the story except for, you know, Twilight had to defeat him with only the powers of friendship, you know, which was far more powerful than the alicorn magic that she gave up, um, but was eventually restored to her because she eventually was able to defeat him and send him back to, you know, the gates of Tartarus. Um, so there's a lot of Greek mythology, you know, that was placed into some of the My Little Pony structure, but Lauren Faust has put a lot more into it than what was originally into the, you know, into the original TV series. Um, she's put more into it with her series, which is, you know, I could consider an alternate universe because technically it's really not first off of um, Dream Valley or uh, the original Ponyland uh, that I was familiar with, but um, Dream Valley or anything like that, I mean, there is no mention of any of that stuff. Um, so, I mean, it's like a lot of the original stuff went out the window after Hasbro lost the rights to these characters. And they are now having to introduce new people because, well, we lost the rights to the original characters, we can't do the original storyline, blah, blah, blah. And they don't have the original, you know, actors or writers for, uh, the, that was in the original series because a lot of those guys have passed away. Um, in fact, there was only one original character that came back to play, um, the character that Rainbow Dash really likes, um, which plays kind of like Indiana Jones character, um, you know, and they go, in one of the episodes they go and, you know, look for and stuff and get into all kinds of trouble, so, you know, um, but other than that, um, these shows are great, um, I honestly believe that you would like this, um, and, uh, you know, if you don't, you know, it's fine, but, um, in the end, you're going to end up with a whole series you can watch on DVD, uh, that's not bootleg, you know, it's not going to end up eventually not working after a while, because that's what happens sometimes when you get stuff that's burned off the internet, they don't work anymore. Um, I've had that problem with a couple of the Gargoyle stuff that a good friend of mine copied for me. And about after a while, they quit working, so, you know. Um, now, there are some things that I bought, and that will be a video for another time. So, peace out, everyone.